Hello, Ren. Hello, Chris. Um, when looking at, at you guys' bios, uh, I think one of the first things that stood out to me was that you both came from like performing arts education in high school. And I wonder, you know, uh, you know, because of funding and a lot of stuff, arts has been taken out of a lot of basic school programs. How how much of a benefit do you think this, you know, having that early start in high school, you know, led to this point where you're at in your career right now? I'll start with you, uh, Chris. Um, hi, Jamal. First of all, good morning. Thank you for, for joining us. Um, that is a really good observation. You know, Ren and I are both from the South, and we actually shared some of the same teachers because the community is so teeny weeny. So one of my mentors is also one of Ren's mentors. She's from South Carolina. I'm from Georgia. Um, so your question is an excellent one, because when I was young, when I was 14, I had no idea that becoming a professional actor was even an option. You know, it was like my world was pretty limited to what I had seen around me, which was I'd see women like me be teachers. I'd seen a few become doctors. So my, my scope was small and it was going to a performing arts school that gave me um, the idea that it wasn't just like a far off fantasy for, you know, blonde women, for white women, for whatever, that people like me could actually, you know, take this to the next level. And so um, I definitely owe so much of my, um, my career in the arts and my, you know, success on this show to my teachers in performing arts um, high school who gave me not just the, the talent, but also the, um, the encouragement and the support to think that I could actually make this, you know, a real thing. And so as far as kids today, I pray that a show like ours um, can be that sort of lighthouse on the hill that shows other kids from whatever community, that it is an option for them, that it's not just for an elite group of people. Yeah. And, and Ren, what about you? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, I have to apologize. It sounded like uh, our my one and a half year old tried to fly. I heard just like a big thud. <laughs> and then, I mean, I don't know. She, I'm sure she was climbing on something, but I, I think she, she fell. So sorry about that. Um, I'm sure she's okay. She's screaming a lot, so. I, sounds like she's just mad. Um, to answer your question, Jamal, um, I mean, honestly, I feel like being kind of like uh, a bit of a, a misfit in high school, um, I, I don't know, for me, arts education was really everything. Um, I felt like it was so important for like to have that that balance of of academics which i also really enjoyed and creativity at the same time and i feel like uh, i'm so thankful to the south carolina governor's school for really creating what i see as like the foundation of the work that i do um and chris is absolutely right we actually laugh a lot about the fact that she was and she went to um on csa and, you know, the governor's school and NCSA actually, like, shared quite a bit of, it, um, of the same instructors, especially early on, just as the governor's school was starting. And, you know, I, I it breaks my heart that arts funding is usually the first thing to go because I feel like creativity as a person is something that serves you throughout your whole life. Um, and it's something that I think serves you in so many different um, careers. And, you know, even if you look at someone like Margot, like one of her biggest assets is not only that she's got this huge creative outlet in the piano, but also that I think part of what makes her such a great problem solver is her creativity and thinking outside of the box. And I feel like the, the governor's school and I, I went to college at SMU, both of those programs really encouraged creative, um, critical thinking. And I, I just, mm -hmm. I feel like it's, it's so important and yeah it, it just makes me it makes me sad that, that yeah. that's where where uh funding goes first
negative pressure. Yeah. You know, this this show does, I mean, first it's, it's Women's History Month, and I think this show is like a great um, example of, of of a history that I wish that we that was all the way true. I know that the writers took creative liberties and put in women into the space program early and, and put in, uh, I know we've had a, a lot of great people that, that have done that. But I mean, how how much how much is this aspirational for the rest of the audience to see what the space pre program could be, what America could be um, with inclusion and with uh, just doing more in space and with NASA than we than we have been able to do. Um, so I, um, first of all, I love your t-shirt, your NASA t-shirt. Um, <laughs> thank you for repping it. <laughs> thank you for repping NASA. Um, you know, I am the host of the For All Mankind podcast, which is a sort of ancillary aspect. We talk about the show, but we also talk about science and STEM and the whole world of technology. And one of my guests is the third black woman to ever uh, go into space. And her name is Joan Higginbotham. Um, and so even though I've been working on this project now, heading into season three, it, I didn't realize that there had only been three women to this day, black women who've been into space. And I think oftentimes there's the assumption that once a black person meets a milestone, that after that, it's just women and diversity all over the place. And so, of course, everyone knows the story about Mae Jemison. And as a kid growing up, I thought, oh, great, she went and now that problem is solved. So to find out that today in 2021, there's still only been three black women in the history of the space program who've ever been into space is heartbreaking. And so I love that our show, um, you know, if you're watching the difference between season one and season two, even small changes like watching the wide shots of Mission Control. You know, early on in season one, it's all men. And you see Margot is really the only woman in it's the room. All white men. Exactly, all white men. And so when you see those large shots of mission control where we've got 60, 70 background actors, our writers and producers are clever to make sure that there are people of all walks of life who are working in every position, in higher up positions and also, you know, as in a more um, nominal positions. And so that aspect of our show is really encouraging for me. Um, and it also sort of breaks my heart because our world today is not like that. And I think that, um, I hope that we can sh shine a light on the ways in which um, breaking the glass ceiling is not enough. We have to continue to break the glass ceiling and then pull people up the ladder, um, which is something that our show does in a really lovely way. And unfortunately in real life doesn't happen as much. Well, thank you. I wanna see it with my own eyes. I wanna suit up in the morning. Put my boots in the moon dust. Hmm. See the sun rise over Shackleton again. <laughs> don't y'all miss it? Come on, Ed. You're telling me you don't ever think about going back? I mean, we were there before there was a there. Don't y'all want to see what we started? Not really. No. <sighs> well, I do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I. I love sitting here in this formerly bar with y'all every few weeks, having a few laughs, but I'm tired of talking about the good old days when we were astronauts. We're still astronauts. <laughs> no, we're not. Well, there's more to being an astronaut than going up in space, Danny. Look, I don't regret a minute of the time I spent here with Clayton these last years, but I will not spend the rest of my life just sitting around saying, you remember this, you remember that, Okay, um, put in the paperwork tomorrow. Really? Thank you, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Danny. Danny. <laughs> Thank you guys for the, the amazing uh, two seasons that I've been able to see so far. Look for the season three. Thank you guys for representing, you know, a future and a present that I wish 
that we had and maybe you know just by seeing it we we are creating it so uh good luck to you guys with every y'all do i'll be a fan and watch whatever you guys do so just uh <laughs> keep on you. doing that i'll keep on watching stay safe thank you there. jamal have a good you morning too. you too <laughs> right. it was really yeah, lovely please. talking with you